Hi ladies, how are you all doing? We are back with a continuation of the story of Flavia. The beginning of the video was about her experiences in Turkey and now she will continue sharing about the opening of the church there. And then Flavia, how was it there? Yes, share with us. The doors were opened. Everyone's curious about this special day. There was a day we changed the facility where we are studying in because the teacher was treating us very badly. No one had patience with us. We didn't know how to speak English. So she tried to explain, but she couldn't explain anything. And we went to another school. And there my husband met an African man. He was from Sierra Leone and he would speak a bit of Turkish, he was learning, he would speak French, English, and we managed to communicate with him. And he said, wow, Brazilian, do you want to be my friend? And my husband said, I want to be your friend. I am the one. And it was so wonderful because he received the prayer and my husband was so happy. And that was after some months. And I remember the first Brazilian who spoke to me in Facebook. I didn't sleep. I was so happy that someone had replied me. And after he introduced another friend, and there was a day my husband went out with one of them because they had, they asked for help. And the man was about to manifest in the middle of the street and it was close to the house. There was no church, anything. And my husband said, Flavia, I'm going there to pray for him. Otherwise, he's going to manifest here. And he brought the man home and he prayed for him. And in the next Sunday, the man came back. And then next Sunday, more two, two more. And African people, students, because we didn't, we wouldn't speak Turkish yet. And there the church started. It started there at home, a small flat, but there the church started. And as time went by and we met them, we found out that we could open an association. We had already enough people to open it. And we opened and we inaugurated. There were 12 people in the inauguration and it was a great joy. And every answer we had, every, every victory, that we even had. though small, right? And sometimes I couldn't even share this with anyone. Because if I speak to someone this, someone will say, oh, okay. But for me, it was great. It was huge. There was a time there we had an answer that for us it was something so big we took the papers to the lawyer and we came out from the lawyer almost jumping in the middle of the street because everything indeed and it's so difficult that every small thing is a victory a reason to celebrate to rejoice Mm. And when you were there, you were still studying, I'm right? I'm still studying. You had about 30 or more people. Yes, on that day there were 54 people. You knew everyone by yes, head, right? we know each one of them. We know each one of them. And when the church opened, what a joy. But we knew those people were there because they knew us. Many of these youth, they left after they finished their studies. They were used by God and they were helped as well. But after to establish the, t the church... Yes, it was hard, right? Many tears, many tears. Many times we were alone. Only the two of us. And when the church opened, we would live three hours away from the church. So we would take a bus, a train, and a boat to get to the church. We didn't have a car. That what you spoke. Sometimes the, the young lady sees the pastor's wife there, well-dressed, driving a car, and she imagines her life is going to be like that. But we have to be ready and available for everything. So on that, in that moment, I didn't miss having a car, but I missed going to church and meeting people who would be thirst, who would want to receive what we have to give, and that would hurt. Sometimes on Sunday, we would go back home crying. Couldn't speak openly about the Lord Jesus. I remember when your husband said, don't speak about Jesus saying this. Certain words we couldn't speak 
and tell them. And we would befriend the Turkish, the men, women. We would understand better their culture, their head, what they believe. And something is that they cannot feel disrespected. Otherwise, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. And the Holy Spirit was giving us direction in a way that we could have their attention, having contact with them, showing exactly this respect. So to receive prayers, they like to receive prayers, but we know as well who we can go a bit beyond, certain words. speak a bit more, so we measure very well our words. And in this period, we had already four death threats in the period that we are there, in different ways. But in all these moments, they were difficult moments as well. But more than ever, we are depending on God in a sense of even protection. Because if it's not God to protect us, we are there in the middle of wolves. If God's not protecting us, we are exposed. You could not have the books, newspaper, Bible to distribute. The Bible is prohibited in the ages under 10. Yes, for those who are under 18 years old, it's prohibited for us to give the Bible. And if someone who is under 18 years old wants to come to the church, they need to have authorization from their parents. Otherwise, it would be a crime because the country is 98% Muslim. So it's, even though there are people who are not leaving this faith, but there are many religious and these threats we had were from religious the people. Relatives right it's practically the relatives that denounce the child or mother yes and we had even to let the police aware about it and take all the necessary care but without fear we are cautious we are prudent we work with prudence but we don't stop doing what we have to do and there was a time that I remember my husband was very afflicted because he wanted to give more, to speak more. He was, oh, Flavia, I feel like speaking freely and we have to go around and talking. I spoke to him, I told him, no, we need to be cautious. And he said, I feel like putting a cross here because there is no cross. There is nowhere written, Jesus Christ is the Lord. And I said, no, my love, don't do that, please. And I even thought, my God, I'm not, I'm not disturbing, he's in faith and I'm not, even this, even the word, we don't have the direction sometimes from outside because there is no one to guide us, but the word of God guides us. And I was meditating and I read when the Lord Jesus would go to the Feast of the Tabernacles, as he would go always. But in that moment, he was being threatening. People wanted to kill him, and he was cautious. And God was showing me how the Lord Jesus acted in that episode. He didn't go with his family. He said, no, you can go, I'll go after. And the Bible said that when he came to the feast, he was in secret. Was Jesus afraid? No, he wasn't afraid, but he was acting with prudence. And at the end of the feast, he was there preaching, which means the objective was reached, but he had to find a new way to get the objective. Yes, also not to put the disciples at risk of being stoned. And God showed me there, you see, this is what you have to do. It's not being afraid. God showed me the difference between being afraid and being prudent. Because when you are afraid, you are paralyzed. If we live with fear, we are not going to open the church. But the prudence, prudence makes us to reach where we need to reach, which are the souls, to preach to them. But we have to take other ways, go around different ways and prudence the the holy spirit through prudence guides yes, us and also your husband said we need to speak their language according to the faith they follow we need to speak saying jesus also did this jesus is also a prophet yes for example they believe that prophet maomet who gave the quran to them 
Maomé says that they would have to listen to all the prophets, for example. Oh, so Maomé said that, and my husband goes there. You know, Maomé, the one you believe, he said you would have to listen to all the prophets. And then he says, and the prophet Jesus, then he goes to the Bible, he said this and this and that. He's taking the word of God. They know Jesus as a prophet. Yes, and they think, well, indeed, I have to give years to Jesus. So we go in this way and we, indeed, we have seen the work of the Holy Spirit being done in the life of those people. There was a year, I think, 2019, we saw a whole family of Iranians giving their lives to Jesus, so beautiful, the young lady with the veil in their head, and she wouldn't even touch my husband because the, the woman can't touch the husband, but they decided to surrender their lives to Jesus, to get baptized, and in the day of the baptism I was thinking, now what if she doesn't want my husband to touch her? How is he going to baptize her? In a detail, they would speak only Persian, nothing to do with Turkish, we were using Google Translation, and I said, what now? But I took it extra piece of clothes. What if she doesn't want my husband to baptize her? I'll baptize her. And when I took her for her to change, she put the gown of baptism with her veil. And I thought, is she going to remove the veil? No, she came with the baptism gown with the veil, got baptized and I said, ah, it's no problem. The veil is already out from her eyes. That's the most important. We know difficult stories of the universal church. And I think one of the most difficult is the one of Flavia and her husband. And Mrs. Esther, I saw, I see from what we lived there, I would think like this, oh, it's so hard to go to a country where you speak another language. I would think like this, well, it must be very hard. But it's also very hard to open the work in a country. So it was all together and I said, oh my God, what now? And today when we think, for example, if we have to go to a, a place where for the church is support, there already, right? that's no longer, it's not only scary. We even said another day that even our criteria of difficult, they change, they change a lot because God make us to overcome the stages and that's wonderful. And one thing that we do not notice is that and everyone needs to notice that it's not the fact that you become a pastor's wife that you will automatically win souls. We have a big difference between pastors and pastors, wives and wives, because this saving of souls comes from our part of surrendering because the more we sacrifice, more God honors us saving souls. I'm sure there wasn't a moment that you needed clothes or you thought, ah, I need a different haircut, because their vanity doesn't... You had to use the clothes from that place. You had to cover everything. You didn't have anyone to call you Miss Flavia. How many assistants have this vanity saying, I will be the missus among the assistants. We are not the missus of anything. We only have one owner in this work, which is the Lord Jesus. We don't even like this title. I don't like to be called Miss. And so, the winning of souls comes from the part of sacrifice. You who are thinking of serving God on the altar, you cannot separate your life from sacrifice. Your life will have to be a total surrender every day to sacrifice what we don't even know God will ask for. In this case, God asked for this. And what will He ask from us in the future? And we are ready to say, I am here, Lord, use my life. Because God is sufficient, is everything, is able all things, and is calling us for this mission. And we are with him to serve him in this way. It is a great privilege. Yes, and something my husband always says, that God is not searching for condition, because condition we don't have and we still don't have. But God is searching the willingness in being 
indeed the offering, being the continuous offering to him. And you on the other side watching, even if you are not married to a pastor and don't go through these type of experiences, but you can pray for those who are there in the front line of the altar, fighting to win souls for the Lord. This means your prayers are also doing your part. You are intervening to God through your prayers, through your intention, because all of us need it. All the pastors, all those that go out to spread the gospel, needing this enforcement, everyone praying for them. You may say, I am not there. I would like to be. But those that are there, be with them. Let this be your cry out. Midnight, pray for those who are preaching the gospel, right? Flavia, because I'm sure that the church was praying for you. They weren't there, but they were praying for yes, you. And Bishop, in that time, he would even ask us to record videos to send here and people would like to see. And sometimes we would receive messages, women would send messages in Facebook saying, Oh, Pastor, I'm praying for you every day. Oh, Indirectly, they were there in Turkey. Like Miss S and Bishop, they didn't go to preach in Salva, but the pastors who are there in the indigenous tribes, Pastors like Bishop Marcelo Pierce there with the Messiahs. You and Bishop are there yes, with them. Yes, praying for them. And so the people need to be together with us. You on the other side can be part of this great movement of faith through your cry out, through your offerings, through your daily prayers. Our desire is to be here speaking the whole day. Yes, we wouldn't lack experiences, stories, many. And I used to say that every week we, we don't have a routine. Every week there is something different happening. And you can imagine every week in six years we would have a lot of things to say, but we wouldn't have Today time. Today is Flavia's last day participating here with us before going back to Turkey. And we took the opportunity to get a bit of her experience with God that she lived and had in and Turkey. it's very difficult to do the work of God. But it is a privilege, a great pleasure. Can you imagine God counting on you, being so small and insignificant, and he counts on you to spread his word? It's a privilege. It's a privilege to serve wherever you are in the way without that choosing. It is. It's a privilege to be part of the work of God. The servant doesn't give opinions, doesn't choose. A servant is just a servant and it's a privilege to serve. That's it. So we are done here for today. A big hug to everyone. Bye. God bless you all.